welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, along with Rue, your co-host on Inspire Nation, along with... CJ Lou with a Fired Up with CJ show, laughing my head off. <laughs> if you've ever wanted to hang in there, no matter what the challenge, then do we have the first three weeks show for you. Today we'll talk about dancing childbirth, blue orbs, miracle surgery, changing formats, trampoline madness, going sleepless, surfing chaos, throwing out routine, and what in the world diarrhea in a rooster has to do with anything. <laughs> that is the worst, Michael. I don't so know. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to the show, CJ. Can you Are cut you ready pa- to shine? I, I am ready to shine. Welcome to parenthood, Michael. Welcome to parenthood. <laughs> I don't, I never, did I ever, I never said to you like, oh, Michael, you have no idea what's in store for you because um, I'm sure it's like, it's not helpful to hear that, but now you can just experience it. (laughs) It, You know, I'm, I'm rolling with it. Um, I don't know if I'm rolling with it successfully, but, but we are making our way through it. And I guess that is success. And um, it just gets more and more interesting each day and with each day that passes i am just amazed at how much the universe laughs at us (laughs) (laughs) finally five minutes to ding dong (laughs) wait a second i can finally ring ring oh finally a chance to (laughs) ring serious there's there's a protein drink in the other room because i'm not managing to eat and and the drink this is a raw shack test. I looked at it this morning, and the drink is an organic protein drink that uh, the the uh, label says K O S. And I looked at it this morning, and I said, "Well, this is a raw shack test. It says chaos to me." <laughs> really, what's going on here for everybody who's who's who can't see this is Rue is in my arms, <laughs> staring at the camera, and and actually color wise, he matches CJ today. Uh, they are coordinated, but he is bringing, he's actually very calm right now, but there's an energy to him and his earlobes. Can you see the color of his earlobes right now? Yeah. What are they normally? Uh, well, they change like a chameleon right now. They're almost fully white and they go to beat right red. Red means that he's very wired or energized or excited. White means he's blissed out and calm or ready to go to sleep. And so he's actually in a very calming place. And I've been, mm-hmm. I've been doing a lot over the last few weeks to drop down into the calming place as the universe has done a lot in the last few weeks to teach me what it really means to need to drop down into a calming place. <laughs> but let's, let's go with the big positive here. Okay. Which is uh, three and a half weeks ago, four weeks ago, we got to move down by Philly um, for to prepare for childbirth down at Children's Hospital in Philadelphia. On the day we were going, we had to leave a bunch of stuff behind as we had a false alarm and had to go straight to the hospital. Oh, wow. And at the hospital, they said, you're very, very far away. This is totally a false alarm. There's nothing to concern yourself with. And, okay. and so then we moved in under, you know, little, little challenging circumstances. It was like, oops, forgot that, forgot that because we went straight to the hospital. Mm-hmm. No big deal. <clears throat> then, uh, we had an, uh, we had four visits in five days or something like that. Um, at the hospital. And on one of those visits, they did an ultrasound and said, um, baby's not really growing anymore inside. She's still moving. She's still doing all right, but she's not really growing. We're concerned the placenta uh, can't make it any longer Mm. uh, because there had been surgery on the placenta Mm. uh, to save baby Hannah's life. And so on Wednesday, they said, if we can make it that long, um, let's uh, induce on Saturday. And we had been planning on a fully natural childbirth and Planning is the key word, and induction involves a, a, a lot of drugs which make it much harder to go the natural method. They say specifically, mm. once contractions start, they don't ease up. A normal contraction has a sine wave of contract, relax, contract, relax. Mm. With induction, it's contract heavy, contract a little bit lighter. Contract heavy, there's no rest. Contract a little bit lighter. Um, and it can go a lot longer, and, 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 and. So on 
Thursday, we had our second meeting with a doula um, to prepare us for uh, uh, imminent childbirth on Saturday. <clears throat> and while the doula was there, we asked um, Hanno, would you mind coming in early so we don't have to do an induced labor? Mm. And uh, did a little acupressure with Jessica that night. She went to bed. Just before midnight, she woke me up, and I said, I know, I'm going to cry again. I'm like, I get it. And so we called the uh, hospital. Um, we took our time. I, my, my words for her were, yes, you're in labor. Go back to sleep. Because <laughs> it's a long road. This is not, it's not a, um, hey, we're good. it's not in the movie, like the movies, at least most of the time, I don't believe. Couldn't really get any sleep, but we had an appointment for two o'clock at the hospital anyway for an ultrasound. I said, let's just shoot for getting in a little before two o'clock. I know this isn't a dry run. This is the real deal, but we're going to move nice and slow. Are you driving from gentle. New Jersey to? No, at that point we're in Philly. Okay, got it. But it's Actually, still... technically we're across the river. We're at a beautiful estuary. It was gorgeous. Um, we had the week to kind of get set up, but I knew I was going to be running solo there for, for many weeks that she was going to be in the hospital, but it was about, uh, 30 minutes or so away. Mm. And so we got there around one, one and I learned this code word and Jessica, this the, is one, one in the night, right? Because in the well, afternoon. Oh, in the afternoon. Oh, so it was 12 o'clock. We just, in the, we the just day. took our time. So the contractions through the night were, uh, started out about 12 minutes apart made it to in the very morning about five or six minutes apart and the rule i'm told is five one one uh five minutes between contractions uh for one minute uh long contractions for more than an hour or something and you you that's typically there's no return from that we weren't quite there mm -hmm. and then once the morning came and cortisol changes the rhythm of the body they slowed down so we were still going in. I knew, knew this was it, but we were going to take things slowly. And I just, I just dropped into the space and I'm like, mm. nice and slow or good. Mm. It's all good. Set up roof for an extended period of rest in the car. <laughs> oh my God. Got into the hospital, learned there's code word because they're taking us for an ultrasound. And I'm going, well, she's having contractions right now. And nobody's taking us seriously until we get into go into the ultrasound to see how she's doing. You don't need an ultrasound for, for labor. And I said, no, she's in labor. <laughs> and it finally registered. <laughs> and they instead took her to the birthing room. Once she was in the birthing room, she could relax. And then the contraction started building and started building. It was the most... special, sacred, so um, I had this vision of us being head to head, which makes no sense, <laughs> but that's what my vision was. But what ended up happening is um, if you picture a slow dance in an eighth grade gymnasium, Okay. I had my hands around Jessica under her arms and then up behind her head. And we slow danced. So I'm, I've got a hoop out in front of me and I'm supporting her. And we danced for seven hours. Wow. And the contractions would come up. I'd let her know I could see on a monitor they were coming up. We'd dance through the contraction. She could rest and not worry about her balance. I had her. Um, in fact, at the very end, it was really weird. <laughs> we knew it was time to push when her legs were coming off of the ground <laughs> on wow. their own, and I was still holding her. Wow. I, I had no idea I even had that strength. But the contraction started coming more and more rhythmically until we were offered a chance for her to take a break. And that, that was a, a slight learning. When we had her lay down on the table, uh, or whatever it is, uh, the contractions got all chaotic, went uh, mm. out of coherence. We got her right back up in the body. It took a little mm. while, 
naturally found its rhythm again. Well, you were in a pool or where were you when you were holding her in this? Um, we're in dance? a birthing room. No, no pool. Okay, got There wasn't, because sometimes I know they birth in water. So you weren't birthing in water. You were just like so, lying on the ground and holding her and like. Not back lying back. on the ground, standing in a You're dance. You were standing for seven we hours? stood for seven hours. This girl is beyond, a, I can't, I don't even have enough superlatives to describe she danced her way through a natural childbirth. Wow. No epidural, no nothing. Wow. Danced. Jessica's a rock star, man. <laughs> Didn't stop dancing until they were like, do you think it's time to push? And they're like, well, get someone in here to check. It was already probably well past that point. Um, but because um, at that point, <laughs> he's contraction. She's got her, her knees going up toward her chest with me holding her. She's off of the ground. <laughs> I didn't understand. I thought you were on the ground. You were standing and this was happening. And what was the doula doing? I mean, is she just like watching to make sure? And, like, so what? it's a birthing room. They're midwives somewhere in the background. They're doctors if necessary. But they all stayed out. It was just the doula. The doula would occasionally do some hip massage work or, or put pressure on Jessica's legs, on Jessica's back to help with a little bit of pain relief. Mm. She was there more to me for safety mm. over for security. It was really just Jessica and myself wow. until the very, very end. Um, and now your video is frozen. Still there with me? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Until the, the very, very end. At that point, they called in the team because once uh, once we gave birth, they would need to whisk Hannah away because her heart wasn't able to get uh, blood to the lungs properly. Oh, okay. um, but we just did a full dance for that seven hours. Wow. And she said, this is stealing her words. First, she had told me there was no pain. And then later she came back and said, I understood the difference between pain and suffering. And, and so she had made the mental connection, which is each contraction has just bring me one step closer to having my baby. Aww. And so it was an invitation in a sense for the contractions to come. Wow. It wasn't a, oh God, here it comes. Now she did get into um, both a tribal dance with her feet <laughs> over time and she did obviously have some vocalization, not an oh God, but more of just a tribal moan is the best way to describe it. Mm -hmm. um, it was the most beautiful, sensual, not, not sexual, very different, mm -hmm. just bonding experience I've ever, uh, never even imagined. And then, and then at the end, they, they finally let her push. I mean, she probably, maybe Hannah could probably have already been born at this point. Then we did get her up on the table, and it was uh, about 30 minutes of pushing. And, and there were so many lessons there, too. And then baby Hannah was here, and she got to be up on Jessica's chest for a minute or two. I got to cut the uh, umbilical cord. Wow, you got to cut the cord? I oh, did. Oh my gosh. And then, then they took her, uh, Hannah, into the next room <laughs> to be checked for her heart, to be given medication, to, to be able to keep her breathing for a few days before surgery. And um, away we went. Well, what was the surgery like? I mean, was it non invasive? I don't even understand the surgery for babies and what that looks like. So, and, and um, I've got a little bit of tears here and no way to. Kind Aww. of take care of things while holding, <laughs> while holding a rooster here. Um, her heart was too strong for, for, from supporting two babies. And so walls in her, I think it's her right ventricle, had gotten too thick, mm -hmm. strong muscle. And as they got thick, it prevented a, uh, a valve from opening and closing, doors from opening and closing properly. And so not enough blood was getting to the lungs uh, through the, the valve, and the valve wasn't able to shut completely. Mm. So what they do did is they ran a uh, catheter, mm. little tube, all the way up to her heart, mm. and inflated a balloon in that doorway twice mm. 
to stretch open the doorway to allow the valve doors to flap open and close completely. Mm. And they just had to do that twice. And then the body's like, okay, I get it. And then it started to do that. Well, it, it gave room for it to be done. Mm. So, um, it's hard. We were in a place of complete surrender. I'm going back emotionally to knowing that your baby needs heart surgery yeah. and your baby is in the cardiac intensive care unit with beeps and monitors and this and emergencies and yeah. everything. And at least, there's probably at least 12, I counted at least 10 different uh, cables, cords and, and catheters coming off of her body as she's there on the on the table she was she was pure love and she was obviously a little buddha very 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 calm um and you go into surgery you have to sign all the waivers and we know what the waivers are i don't need to go over that with people um and you you hold your breath and go to prayer um she came out with flying colors and that was that was a beautiful meeting with the doctor it's, it's been all these ups and downs. So you're told beforehand, um, you're given scary information, then you're given better information, then you're given scary information, then you're given better information, then you get surgery done and you're given good information. And then another doctor comes in and gives you scary information. And you're just on this continuous wow. roller coaster of complete and total letting go. And then the surgery went well. After that, there is a bypass valve, which is what they had given medication, keep this bypass valve open that only is open before a baby is born. Mm -hmm. And that keeping that open saved her life. Then the valve has to close, and we get to see whether the surgery worked. Mm. And as the valve closes, her um, saturation numbers, oxygen levels, mm, go up. Start, went down. Oh, went, oh. And you start to get more and more afraid <laughs> and you can't get a doctor to tell you, is it okay? Is this normal? Is it how it's supposed to be? Mm. And you're just surfing <laughs> this complete and total wave. Wow. And then a day and a half later, it starts to come <laughs> back up and you're going, thank God. And oh, during this God. time also, <laughs> she would stop breathing in the middle of the night just for tiny little bits. Oh, no. They call them bradycardia <clears throat> events and her heart rate would go down. And all these alarms and stuff will go off. And so you're going, will I be able to take her home? Will she be okay? Will she stop breathing? Will she have enough oxygen? And it's just this wild ride. And, and during this time, I'm driving back and forth. So I'm driving uh, conservatively three to four hours a day, going back and forth from the hospital to the house that I'm staying at. Um, and then coming back and going back and coming back and going back because although it was only a 30 minute drive once just to get parked and going through Philly, um, rush hour traffic or accidents or whatever, it was an hour drive each way. So if I went and spent twice a day there, but trying to keep everything else going and I got Rue with me four hours of driving a day and like I'd stay till 12 or one o'clock at night. You know, it means I get home at two and I'd be back there at six o'clock in the morning. And it was it was quite the journey. Um, that was until a week and a half ago. Baby wow. Hannah's doing well. And they say, here's the deal. We will. You doing all right, Rue? I'm going to sit back a little bit. We will let you out of the hospital if you can find a pediatrician near your home. So how fast can you find a pediatrician? Oh, wow. <laughs> and, yeah. No notice, no anything. <laughs> Miraculously, the first one that I wanted uh, didn't work out at first, then doubled back around and it did. It was in a complete flow. Um, but we had to leave the hospital on, I think, Thursday. And they wanted us to pack up everything and move back home for Friday morning to go to the dock at home. And we totally missed that deadline. We got to the dock. We had to drive all the way back up here. Uh, it's good three hours back up here, got to the dock and then drive three hours back down to Philly because we hadn't had a chance to pack everything up in time. Oh my goodness. Oh, Michael. Wow. And it's, it's been a journey. I have no complaints. I have a lot of, 
I can both have no complaints and get upset easy. The upset isn't the normal upset, is the fight or flight mechanism going, God dang, man. <laughs> Cut me some slack. For the first week, um, we had packed up to move. And so I had packed up my exercise gear. And that keeps me calm. And it was in the car for almost a week. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Going, seriously, couldn't I pack that up last, please? <laughs> and and it's 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 one challenge after the next. There are no complaints. I can describe a little bit of how our current lives are going. I will say this. Good job, Rue. I believe she's a very special child. Mm-hmm, now I, I won't I won't go into total details, but we had Belinda Womack, uh, Arch- uh, Archangel expert on the show last Thursday. And she said, do you mind if I meet with you a little bit early? She's like, I got a message from the angels. Wow. And she spoke to us for an hour and a half and we never got the show in, which is the universe laughing. Um, she is like a little Buddha. Oh. We keep seeing blue orbs around her. She has a blue orb on her hand. It's you like mean blue orb on her hand. It's like a tattoo. It's a birthmark. It's a blue orb. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. On her right hand, you'll see it. Um, She, other than, this girl is a chimp off of the old block in her intensity. Mm. She's very calm. What a perfect place to have the first few weeks of your life. Bells, whistles, alarms, trios, emergency, new nurse, new nurse in training, new doc, new doc in training. Everything going nuts, jabbed, poked, pricked, and she's just calm as anything. Well, that's Except, because you guys are sitting there calm, calm, helping her. She was just calm. <clears throat> then, then they said the one requirement for her to leave is she needs to gain more weight. Mm. And so she ate just enough to get us out of there. She was born just under five pounds. Wow. She gained just enough to get out of there. And then she got home where they're not poking, prodding, beeping, glaring. And she's like... Give me food. <laughs> this girl will eat up to four hours straight and eat and eat and eat and eat. Not like she's she's a five pound little girl, but she has this strength or fire for life that you can see is so incredibly powerful. Wow. And then she goes back to the center place. Rue can crow right next to her and she's like, <laughs> she's wow. like just totally grounded. It is wild. Wow. Is Jessica nursing her for these four hours or you, is she like, because she would be, that's a lot to nurse a baby for four hours. It's, it's everything. It's nursing. It's formula. It's, uh, uh, what do you call it? The machine that, that draws milk off of Jessica. Mm-hmm which for some reason I'm forgetting the words right now. I yeah, forget. I know the thing. Yeah, the, I, I Short-term it. memory is... Ex- it's basically milking yourself. I used to have yep. a machine like that. <laughs> so, Rue, I'm going to put you down for a minute. How many hours of sleep are you averaging per night? Jessica's averaging, I think, two and a half, would you say? How many hours of sleep are you averaging? Um, four. Well, she thinks maybe four. That's not bad. Actually, and, that's and, pretty good. If but it's not continuous. It's like up and down, up and down. Yeah. And 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 I'm I'm only getting about that much as well. Um, but she does she does the majority of the work in the middle of the night. Last night I was up uh, feeding baby Hannah, and I get up. the The rule is um, how high. That's the number one rule is how high, which is when she asks for me to jump, how high. <laughs> That's a good thing because my husband would sleep through everything. I would like the baby be like, "Eh," and I'd wake up and like run to the bedroom and like start. I mean, you can, as a mom, you hear everything. I don't know as a dad, but my husband would sleep through everything. And so I'm like, why didn't you get the baby? He's like, I didn't hear the baby. I'm like, I hear that, like just like a little squeak. And I'm like, boom, into the bedroom feeding the baby or whatever. (laughs) I'm, I'm not the sharpest tools in the shed. I can only speak for myself. So we all know what it's like to go to the fridge and forget what we what we're there for. 
exactly. I, I can start walking toward the fridge and forget even where I'm going. <laughs> I, I, had, I, I did this at age 35 and 37. And um, I would go into work with two different socks on and my shirt inside out. Like that's kind of, and, and you have no idea. And if people are like, oh, your shirt's inside out, you're like, really? Okay, let me see if I have enough time and energy to change it. I don't even know see, if I can I think do I it. would be like my shirt, although I'm actually building a program with Mike Dooley right now, so I get to actually make sure my shirt is 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 in good shape. But other than that, I would be like, uh, it's inside out. Eh. Like this morning, <laughs> things were falling out of the fridge on me, and I'm like, eh. And, and they're all over the floor, and I'm like, eh. <laughs> Oh, what's so interesting is baby Hannah is training you. You thought that you were <laughs> you thought that oh, you were gonna I be knew. taking care of her, but yeah. she's actually like, Look at me, look at me, Dad. I'm here, the rooster's crowing, I have twelve things hooked up to me and I'm super peaceful. So if I can do this, you can too. Totally. <laughs> Between the rooster and Hannah, like you've got the rooster seems to me, Roo seems to be Remember you had that watch that would give you a sense of whenever your your stress levels are going up? Yep. Like, Rue is your, like, you don't need that watch. Rue is just that watch. Totally. <laughs> and and he is a creature that demands routine. Mm -hmm. uh, and we all do. We all yearn for routine. Mm -hmm. uh, even when we claim, well, no, 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 I'm an, a, a free spirit. No, you're a free spirit, but you still want to know approximately when you go to sleep, when you rise, when you get food, yeah. the basics. But there is no routine right now. Yeah. There is Well, there none. is a routine, but it's the baby's routine, not your routine. Even it's, well, it's more than that. It's the baby's routine or non-routine coupled with the Rue routine, non-routine, coupled with the the phone calls and interruptions routine, non-routine. And so there's uh, no coherence to anything and so we're seeking for those anchors now and without the anchors it's um challenging and then the big unknown that will work out great you hear that universe so we get to move again in one month <laughs> this was a rental to get us through this time period to where cj oh gosh just drive up to new hampshire and something <laughs> like oh no there goes <laughs> <laughs> I can tell there's a duress. It's almost like Bruce, like the exclamation point going, yeah, Michael's a little bit stressed, but don't be stressed about it. <laughs> Just... <laughs> okay, Rue. <Roo. laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give baby Hannah back to my family. I will calm the room and we will wrap this beautiful show up. <laughs> but this is, this is a window mm -hmm. into what we're going through and it's perfect. It's awful without complaint. I've got a miracle baby here. It's awful in that the egoic small self really would like some calm and stability and sleep right now. It's beautiful because we're learning A, what we need, B, because we're sleep deprived, the wounds that have not been fully healed will come up to be healed, the insecurities that have not been fully let go of will come up to be healed. And so it's, it's actually a brilliant time where we thought she was being born, but we're all being born. We're all being reborn during <laughs> I this period. See that. I can totally see that. How beautiful, Michael. The whole thing is just so, such an exquisite, um, exquisite to hear how you can navigate the whole thing. Oh, I see. Wow. Oh, she's beautiful. <laughs>